self-service data preparation in Sasibaya. Data preparation can be a very time-consuming part of the analytics life cycle. In order to make the process of data preparation faster and easier for all users, many organizations are turning to effective self-service data preparation applications. So what is self-service data preparation? Self-service data preparation is the process of cleansing, transforming, and governing your data using an interactive toolset that requires no coding skills. This is an iterative process, so self-service data preparation tools should support data curation from the time when you ingest or create the data until it's considered obsolete and is deleted or archived. Effective self-service data preparation applications make data easier to access and simpler to manage. They ensure instant results with fast and regular service. In addition, administrators can define user and group access permissions to data through a robust and comprehensive security model. Self-service data preparation also includes the ability to efficiently share data with others and improve the reusability of the data. SAS data preparation tools enable users to perform advanced data preparation tasks in order to support predictive analytics, modeling, text analytics, and more. In addition to SAS data management tools, you can use self-service data preparation in SAS VIA. Self-service data preparation in SAS VIA is ad hoc and flexible. It supports data scientists, business users, and analysts by enabling them to blend and wrangle data in an interactive way before final result sets are created and shared. Data blending is the process of integrating data from varying data sources into a form that's usable by analytical processes, models, and reports. Data wrangling is the process of transforming and cleansing dirty data into a, des into a desired format that is fit for or fit for purpose. Depending on the task, you might choose to use SAS application or SAS via applications. Data managed with SAS application like SAS data integration studio can be loaded into CAS memory or CAS memory and used by SAS via applications. Data prepared in SAS VIA can be saved to a location that SAS applications can access. SAS and SAS VIA work together, and SAS VIA is not a replacement for SAS. It adds self-service data preparation, distributed in-memory processing, cloud enablement, and new machine learning capabilities to the many capabilities of SAS applications. SAS Data Preparation has four components. These are the SAS Data Explorer, SAS Data Studio, SAS Data Quality, and SAS 9H Viewer. SAS Data Explorer enables you to access data from SAS datasets, relational database tables, delimited files, social media data, and more. You can load data into memory in the SAS VIA environment to work with it in other SAS VIA applications. You can also assess the data structure and content by profiling the data and viewing sample records. SAS Data Studio enables you to restructure, cleanse, and aggregate your data using transforms. You can select the data of interest by filtering rows and subsetting columns and tables. You can manipulate data by transposing the data and aggregate data by appending or joining tables. You can structure data into a desired format by moving columns to different positions in the data, creating new columns, and changing column formats and types. SAS Data Quality enables you to access transforms in SAS Data Studio that leverage the SAS Quality Knowledge Base, or QKB, to provide consistent data cleansing. This transforms enable you to perform a variety of tasks. You can standardize data to put it in a consistent format. 
You can also identify entities in the data such as name or organizations. You can also separate data into meaningful tokens such as separating a person's name into a first name and last name. SAS Line Age Viewer enables you to view relationship among objects such as tables, servers, jobs, and reports. For example, a table might be dependent on the job that creates it. These relationships enable you to perform impact analysis on data management objects. Impact analysis involves evaluating the consequences of removing or changing an object. For example, if a table is deleted, SAS Line Age Viewer enables you to see which data management plans and job will fail. You can also see object metadata such as the object type, date last modified, and the object's uniform resource identifier or URI, which can be used to access the object through a third-party REST API call. For regulatory purposes, um, you might need to be able to track the location and use of personal data throughout an organization. SAS Line Each Viewer is one of the SAS data governance tools that can help to track and document the use of data and processes. The environment we're going to use in this course consists of a Windows client machine with a single machine SAS via deployment. You use a browser on the Windows client machine to access the SAS via applications and services. Um, the course environment includes predefined SAS via users and custom groups in SAS Environment Manager. All students use their own environment, so no student's use of his or her environment impact others. So the following data was anonymous anonymized for use in this course like bank customers, heart patients, transactional order information, and business customers. SAS Data Explorer gives you to share your managed content with other users to promote collaboration in SAS VIA. To do this demonstration, we must again log into our SAS account. Sign in. And then again, you need to go to ple.sas.com slash course slash view. So you may use this uh, IP address or the website address for you to log in with SAS via. And you will be redirected with this uh, web page or page. Then just click launch SAS via for learners 3.5. So this demonstration will illustrate creating a CASLib to access data on a disk that is local to the CAS or CAS server. So again, you need to sign in with your account. For example, my account is just Fuentes and then you supply for your password. Then you just click this button or show list of, of, of application to access the SAS via application. Click Manage Data to open SAS Data Explorer. From here, you just click the data source or data sources. So take note that by default, any CAS or CAS servers to which you have access is shown or are shown here. So just click this portion or this icon one, down one level for the CAS uh, shared default server. So you will see uh, these different kinds of items. So these items are the pre-configured CAS leads on this image based on what SAS products have been um, installed and licensed. Then here, if I'm going to type the IDP, 
diretso na DIDP casting points to pre-install data used in the course. And so here are the bank customers, car, glass. So we're going to make use of that later on. In creating a file system cast lib, we need to click this icon. So we're going to connect to add a data source. So just click on that. It will have the connection setting here. So the connection settings panel contains various settings used to create a custom cast lib connection based on the type and source type. Uh, source type fields, the settings on the setting, settings tab um, might, might change. Like for example, a type of file system and a source type of path will include a path setting. So in this case, we can actually change the connection name. Server is the default one. And then we can also change the type of the file system from database, file, or others. And then the path from path, PNFS, HDFS, but by default, the source type is path. And then we're going to uh, check the persist disconnection beyond the current section or session. Then we're going to uh, use the path here, uh, which is uh, required. Then once we click that one, we can click the connection and then save the uh, connection settings. So let's say, for example, we want to uh, change the setting and we want to change the name from customer data, uh, from new connection to customer data. And then, for example, we just want to stay the type and the source type, type from file system and type, source type from path. So we are just going to uh, in, uh, stay the, or re retain the name of the, uh, the type and the source type. So from here, I'm going to just change it to customer data. And then uh, we can select the path. So from here, I just use slash workshop, for example, slash DIDP slash data slash SAS data. So then uh, we can already click uh, the connection. So I think, uh, for me, it's already like found and it has been already been used. So I just want, if I'm going to save it, okay, again, the path was not found because I've been, I've been already used that uh, from, uh, from the previous one. But in your case, when you use this path, once you click the connection, it should be connected. And once connected, it must be saved. Please take note that this is just an example on how are we going to connect uh, our settings, specifically on how are we going to connect the path. From our previous lecture, you know already how to uh, click and set the path by just right-clicking the, the, uh, the file path and then just paste it on the path. Since I have already the DI, uh, DIDP, so this icon, is a global cast lead. This icon appears beside the connection because the persist uh, disconnection beyond current session checkbox was selected on the connection settings. So again, since I have already an existing DIDP, that's why I have an error earlier. But in your case, when you're able to add the path, it will be automatically save the connection. In modifying and sharing cast libs, we can share a newly defined uh, cast lib. For example, this cast user, uh, JS Fuentes, and then it contains uh, files here within um, the cast lib. So we can right click, for example, one of those data. Like for example, I would just want to uh, uh, edit the authorization from, from uh, market that's a 7 dd Right click on it or in housing, ah, market, that's as the ATV. So as you can see, there are uh, selections, um, selections from there. So we have um, 
the view authorization, uh, the edit authorization. So when you say view authorization, it displays the uh, current group and user authorizations on the CASLIB, while the edit authorization um, enables you to modify the CASLIB authorization settings. So those are just the uh, uh, options available on CASLIB menu that we can actually use. Uh, the available settings vary depending on the CASLIB types and your authorization. So let's say, for example, I uh, right-click on this. So this is the, the options available about this one. So same. So let's go up. And let's say, for example, I have the BIDP. Access the BIDP, bank customers. So these are the options. Okay. So let's try to right click the bank customers here and view the authorization. So once we click the view authorization, it will display this one, the view authorization display. So by default, authenticated users have no access to the CASLIB or source uh, data. So same thing as this, this uh, just for this because this one is from SAS. So the full control is in this particular uh, provider. So we can actually update the access level if you are the if you you are full control with it. So you can actually um, uh, slide to update the access level as shown here. And just take note that the slider sets the group access levels for authenticated users. So if in case that you can edit this one, uh, you just click save and then close. Okay, so let's say for example, we want to uh, use another data set from uh, Data Explorer. So for us to upload the file, we can actually upload the file within the, the Data Explorer, but we need to go and proceed to uh, SAS Studio. Okay, so from SAS Studio, same thing as what we did from our, from our previous lecture, we can actually uh, upload files within this uh, Explorer. So let's say, for example, here in our previous tables, that 101, I just want to um, upload the file. And then let me just use the customer's uh, data set. Just drag it here and then upload. And then customers that says 7 bd 80 is here. Now, if we want, for example, to proceed to manage data, um, let me just refresh it again. So, for example, uh, I'm using this uh, CAS library. So, I need to go to my uh, CAS user, which is my under my name, click this uh, icon to expand uh, the CAS lib, and we are going to see that there are three files here, but there's no customers. So again, we cannot actually upload the file here. We can actually only uh, run the file or, or do the uh, data exploration within uh, uh, this particular data, uh, managed data or data explorer. So how are we going to uh, move the data set here in the data explorer or manage data. So again, from uh, SAS Studio, which is under developed SAS code, uh, earlier we already uploaded the file from STAT 101. So um, to uh, use this one in our uh, data explorer, so we are going to right click on it, copy to, wait for this uh, to display on screen and then uh, from here from cast user just select cast user and then click ok so definitely that particular data set will be copied here in the uh, cast user okay then go back to uh, manage data and then again so let's say for example you are here in the data source and this is the default cast lib then again, look for the cast user, then your name, then click this icon again to expand the data. 
So as you can see, it's not yet uh, included. So you need to click this one to refresh. Once it has been refreshed, automatically, whatever you uploaded and copied in the CAS user from uh, SAS Studio will then be copied also here in the CAS user from uh, Data Explorer. So now, for example, we want to select this and we want to open this. So we can see that there are 12 columns, but there are no rows yet. So how are we going to populate the data from that particular uh, data set? So I, we know that there are there a are, uh, number of observations for, for that, but how are we going to uh, display the number of rows? So in this case, again, let's go back here on the customer that says uh, 7 EDAD populate you just simply click the load loading customer loading wait for it so there will be again a populating uh, customer with 12 columns and then 77 rows it means that there are 77 observation when once we loaded the data from a customer okay so we can already use this as our uh, data set from Data Explorer. So this is just the details of that particular data. And if we want to see already the number of observation or the specific rows, we can click here, the sample data. And you can see the, uh, the columns here, and then the names of the, uh, the names or the, the, the observations within this particular data set. Okay, so this is the data set as well. So for profile, there's no profile on it because there's no activities yet or task done. So we have only the details and we have the sample data. So from the profile, once you click the run profile, just wait for a couple of minutes, then you will see uh, this one. Okay, so you will see the sample run profile. So the button earlier, which is the run profile button, enables you to generate table statistics and metrics. Okay, and which we which is viewable in a default uh, profile report. So this is an example of the uh, table statistics and metrics. So we also have the run profile and save. So if you are going to click the run and profile and save, so you can actually uh, name the table. Okay, so this button saves the table statistics and metrics to a CAS table uh, in an existing CAS lead that can be used as input for custom reports generated by other applications. So such as, for example, we're going to make use of the visual analytics so we can actually do that. So I'm going to use customer profile and then click run. Wait for it. So it has been saved already, I think. Profile. So cast this one. Uh, let's just sit up. And then. Cast user. Try it again. Profile customer profile here in the default 056. Let's click on this. Let's use this one and click OK. Then run so we can see that it has been already saved from this CAS user library. And let's refresh it. So there. Okay, so customer profile. You 
can right click the column and then resize it. And just drag so that you can see the column name. Um, the sort and filter options enable you to modify the display of the columns. This can be very useful with a table that contains hundreds of columns. You can also click, for example, uh, country. Once you click the country, you will see this descriptive metric metrics section to show the minimum and the maximum um, outlier values and the mode, which is the highest occurring value for the character data. You can click also the frequency distribution uh, so that you can see the frequency bar chart and scroll forward uh, the mouse wheel to see the values of the chart. So once you click on this, you can also see the bar. Uh, you can see the frequency statistics for this value. Like for example, this value is CA, the count is 15, and it is 19.5% out of 100% of the values. So on top, you can also click the profile report name to return to the top level of the report. And then we have the uh, versions. So you can still, again, refresh and refresh to update also the data. And then you can also click the details tab here. Okay, so this is the profile. And then that's it. Thank you.